while I was in uh, Mountain View. I was testing out the Osmo Pocket 3. And basically what it is, is a little like on the, on the move camera system with a built-in gimbal. See how the camera kind of locks onto a target, keeps itself stable. It can do horizontal. It can do lands or sorry, it can do vertical. Uh, depending on what you have this set at is what it's shooting in. So if I wanted to do all vertical content, I'd just leave it like that. If I wanted to do or switch, you know, to horizontal, I can. 4K resolution. I have it set to 4K 30. I could go up to 4K 60. Uh, I can do slow-mo, not at 4K. I think it's like 3K slow-mo or 2K slow-mo. Um, and yeah, you can, you know, fix it to face so it has this like face auto detect feature so when that's on then it then it looks into the uh, any shot and it finds the mo the predominant face and it makes a guess as far as what the right face is uh to lock onto and then it follows that so depending on you know where this is in space as you're walking around like it's great for vlogging because you can really just kind of like point it roughly in the vicinity of your face and it will follow along. Um, but it has, you know, some other modes too. It has this dynamic framing. So you could uh, pick an object in the shot and it will always, it will force that object to stay in a particular part of the shot, no matter where you are. Um, it also has the spin shot. I tried this out at the Google event and boy, did I get it wrong. Um, and, but it's still neat. I know that it was just user error and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't designed poorly. It was just, I didn't, I didn't read the instructions. So I didn't know how to use it. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I mean, things have really shrunken down over the years. I mean, that's, that's why I ended up getting this. I was at a different Google event in New York, uh, last month, I think, and, uh, ran into Tim Schofield, uh, there, another, you know, YouTube tech content creator guy, friend of ours. He's been on and uh, all about Android a number of times. You need to have him on Android Faithful. And uh, he had one of these things, and I saw him using it, and he was just totally talking up the, uh, the you know, the singing the praises of the Osmo Pocket 3. And he's like, you know, if you get it, it's around $550, but get the creator combo, which is another $150, and you get all these extra um, kind of uh, peripherals like this thing you can screw on and then boop, boop, boop. And now you can set it on the table. And so I used that at the Google event, you know, just parked it like that, had the, the camera pointed at me. And then I could do kind of like standups or, you know, talking uh, stuff to the camera and it would follow me and stuff. So that was kind of neat. Also has, you know, when you remove this base, like this is the actual size of the device. It's that small. So you're talking about, you know, shrinking it down into a small form factor. This is how it, how big it actually is. Uh, this is really just an, uh, an attachable base so that you can screw into um, the bottom with things like, here, I'm going to move this so we have some contrast, um, like, you know, this type of base. But really, you could put this into any sort of tripod. That's really what that's all meant to be. Um, and then... The creator combo comes with the DJI Bluetooth mic. And see, this actually comes off. Um, so this is the mic transmitter. And it's all, you know, connected via Bluetooth to the device. And you just snap the microphone into place, turn it on, just like two seconds, it turns on. And now that audio transmits over to the Osmo, like without any fuss, it just automatically sets it up. And what that ends up being useful for is like when I was at the Google event, you know, I'm, I'm shooting a demo with someone and I'm using this almost as like a handheld mic, which I've definitely seen some like influencer types online and stuff using this like that. Probably audio files might cringe at that, but really for something like this, it's like, it's about ease of use. It's not as much about, you know, the 
most pristine audio quality or doing it the way the professionals do it or whatever. It, like it was incredibly versatile and like I could just reach in my pocket, power this on and go. And I didn't have to think about it. And it, it, when it's just you, you know, when it's, when you're a one person show, you have to minimize the uh, complicated nature of all of this stuff. And that's kind of what the beauty of this device um, is. And so that's in the box. Oh, another cool thing that this does, this little red button. So yes, it's transmitting the audio to the camera, but if I do that red button, I can also record the audio directly on the mic itself. And that's meant to be another fallback in case there's something up with the transmission from the mic to the camera. So the camera would, you know, cause it's recording locally the video and hopefully the audio that's coming from this mic. And if that doesn't happen, if that, if, if in a weird state, you know, that, that didn't happen as expected, you'd still have the audio on the mic itself. So it's recording locally and it's broadcasting it. So really great redundancy there. And then let's see what else we got in this, like this kit that you get. Oh yes, of course. This is a, an extra battery. And so this, you can just clip on to the bottom. Boop. And now it's sending that charge over to remaining a battery level of battery handle, 47%, so it's not fully charged. With both of these, so I think if I was shooting 4K30 on just the base itself, I'm gonna get around two and a half hours of footage on a um, 128 uh, gig uh, memory card, and I'm gonna get around two hours of, of battery life. When I snap this into place, that extends it another two hours. So you get close to four hours of battery life with that in place. And you know, it does make it a little bit larger. Um, my one complaint, oh no, never mind. Oh my goodness. I don't know how I missed that. Oh, <laughs> when I was at the event, I was confused. I was like, I want to be able to put this thing, you know, this base into the bottom of this. I forgot that I already had it screwed into this and I was like, oh, well you can't do it. But that's, that was just my dumb error. You unscrew this, screw that on there and boom. Yes. It's a little bit taller, but now you've got the battery life that you want. Um, and you know, the ability to plop that down onto a tabletop. So it's just really flexible and really, really versatile. I mean, definitely worth ponying up an additional, you know, 150, I think it is for the extra kit. And then what else do you get? You get, let's see here. Um, I hope I still have it. So you get this handle. It's like a storage handle. So go ahead and power that off. I'll remove the base that kind of goes into its zone there. And then I can go ahead and bloop that fits right in there. And that protects, you know, definitely protects the lens that's on the inside and just kind of gives it a storage base. I saw Tim Schofield when he was showing this to me, he was like, yeah, and I like to use the base. He, he would flip this over as like an extra handle, but man, I do not feel comfortable doing that. That feels, oops, I think I just started recording. Like, I don't know why I would want to do that. He said it, it just acted as like a nice kind of handle to uh, grip the thing, but maybe that's just because when you're on the go and you take it out of this, you got to find a place for this and instead just make the place that, and just, I just feel like that's going to flop out. I don't know. I don't like that as much. I'm probably not going to do that. I certainly didn't do it on the, on the, uh, the weekend or the, the trip to Google. And then finally you get this, which is a wide angle lens. So, and it's not a super wide angle, like you can kind of see the camera here. And then, so make a mental note of where that, like the lighting system is up there. I'll let it settle for a second so you can see. And then when you put this on, kind of extends it out a little bit. Actually, probably the better way to look is the black bar over here. When I snap that on, you, you get a lot more uh, outside of the original shot. So it's a little bit of a wide angle. And through my use, I was, I was, you know, using this a lot at the made by Google event. I probably 
I, I realized the need for the wide angle about halfway through all the footage that I shot. And once I put it on, it didn't feel like it was overly stretching things, you know, it was adding just a little bit extra, but it, but it really came in handy for uh, some of the shots that I was, was doing. And in particular in the interviews, not having to be so precise on where I'm pointing the camera and everything like that. It did get a little funky sometimes, you know, with, with something like this and the software, it wants to make guesses about um, what you're trying to shoot, you know, cause the gimbal is, is stabilizing the camera. Yes. But the way that the software works is it's stabilizing around the object that you are intending to shoot. And so it's trying to guess, like, are you intending to shoot this person? Are you intending to shoot this product? There's actually a product mode. Um, how do I get to that? I think it's over to the side. Yeah. So there is a product showcase mode, which essentially means that if there's a face in the shot and a product, it will, it will force the focus point to the product that's in the shot and not the face, which once I realized that was there, that came in super handy because I actually have some footage where it was on continuous mode, which is kind of the default, which is, you know, it says autofocus continues to operate, which is suitable for capturing moving subjects. So it's it's continuously looking for the subject to focus to. And often it was opting for me and not the product. So I had some B-roll where, you know, I was trying to um, show myself using a product, but I wanted the focus to be on the product. And when I looked at it on the screen, you know, on my uh, laptop, the um, the focus of of that was placed on me and not the product. So it's like, okay, great. People don't need to see me in focus. Like they want to see, they're watching this because they want to see the actual product and not me. And so some of that B-roll is probably unusable or very lightly usable. Um, certainly not in the way that I intended, but, uh, anyways, I'm going to, you know, I'm going through that today and hopefully get my thoughts of the event up a little bit later, but yeah, that's the Osmo pocket three. So far, so good. I'm really happy I got it. Uh, I think it was a really strong um, multi-use purchase. The idea that I can just grab something and do like behind the scenes footage and stuff and sh you know, show the production of, of what I'm doing here uh, behind the scenes, you know, before, you know, grabbing a phone is, is fine, but this thing's really tailored for this stuff. And, you know, it, it, it creates for every video file that you do. It also gives you that wave file, you know, um, as a separate recording. So whether you're using this mic or not on the file system, you have the video file and you have a separate wave uncompressed audio file, uh, depending on where the audio source is coming from. What I wonder is if I'm recording with this, does it also give you the onboard as a backup? I don't think that it does. I think it's one or the other. That would be kind of neat if it did, but um, yeah, pretty sweet. Oh, and I, I should also say that the charge on this thing was super fast. Like I was in the car halfway through the day and the battery was totally depleted on this device. I was about halfway through of the backup battery and I had a, like a 15 minute drive ahead of me to get to the next destination. And so I plugged it in. And when I got there, this thing was practically, it was like 90% by the time I got there, which I was really, really impressed by like 15 minutes of charge to get this thing from zero to almost full. And, um, yeah, that was pretty sweet. So anyways, that's the Osmo pocket three. I'm trying to see if there's anything else in this kit. The, the kit that they give you is great. Um, kind of hard to see with my lighting. I do have a, you know, I have a, uh, I ended up purchasing separately two of the memory sticks that it takes. It doesn't take the larger one. It's, I got the SanDisk ones, but it's the really, you know, small micro, uh, micro size SD. You just pop that into the thing and then you know, I was just using this to bring it into my computer, but have that in there as a backup. Always good to have backups and go ahead and exit this. Um, oh, when you put it into vertical, it does a countdown to turn off. So when you're kind of on the go, you can just flip it and wait and it kind of returns itself to its storage mode. 
and boop, it's in the case. And there we go. All right. Well, lucky you, James. You got a <laughs> very personal review of the Osmo Pocket 3. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I might, if you're okay with it, James, I might repurpose this and just end up releasing it because why the heck not? If there's one thing I've learned in the world of pr content production, it's that there are always opportunities to turn around more content. And are you looking for those opportunities? If so, great. 